Coming up in episode 64. They want choice. They want variety. They're, you know, and think about something like a Yelp, if you will. Mm. We research everything we do before we do it now. And it, it dictates whether if a restaurant you're planning to go to has two stars after it has five. If it has two, you probably won't go there anymore. But you're starting to see that influence in, in the grocery shopping experience. Welcome to another episode of The Little Radio Show. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Juan Alaniz and Angelica Casares, and we're bringing you small talk about big topics. This week on The Little Radio Show, we talk with Crystal Howard from the Kroger Company about how our favorite grocery store prepares for big holidays like Thanksgiving, and about some of the innovations they've put into place recently. And in this week's PSA Soapbox, I remind everyone to get more sleep, talking about some of the ways lack of sleep impacts your health, your productivity, and your life. Just a reminder that you can catch us every week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on hmsnetradio.org. Our show archives and the link to our iTunes channel and Stitcher channel are available at thelittleradioshow.com. The Little Radio Show is brought to you in partnership with juanofwords.com and hispanichouston.com. So we're excited to have another uh, one of our friends back in the studio, Crystal Howard with the Kroger Company, who was actually one of our first guests on the radio show. And so we're excited to welcome her back um, to this episode. And we, we thought it was very fitting, given that the holidays are right around the corner and there's a lot of attention being spent or a lot of time being spent at the grocery stores these days with people wanting to pick up the items that they need for their family get-togethers and, and um, festivities. So welcome, Crystal. Welcome back, Crystal. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm so flattered you called me a friend. Yeah. Thank Yay. you. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and the beauty of it is here we are. A- another year has elapsed and the holiday season is upon us. So in the retail world, Halloween marks the start of our holiday season. Uh. So from Halloween to Valentine's Day, it's mania for us. So you imagine you have Halloween, you have Thanksgiving, Christmas, other winter holidays, Super Bowl, which is a very big oh, deal for Houston, for Houston this Absolutely. year. And goodness. then Valentine's Day. So are so you guys preparing for the Super Bowl itself? We are. So it's going to be pure mania. So we have different partnerships that are in place, different activations. But from a food standpoint, we are preparing to have just increase our inventory of guacamole, buffalo wings, all of those things spike during the Super Bowl season. So so take something like an in-store made guacamole, Mm -hmm. we actually see sales spike four times than a traditional grocery shopping week. Oh, wow. I I am one of those, I am one of those who likes the prepared platters. Like, I don't want to fuss, I don't want, and I know Kroger does a phenomenal job of walking in, being able to pick up a tub of guacamole. (laughs) Literally. And it's fresh. We make it right there on site, fresh avocados, onions, tomatoes, those we make it right there at the store and that's a big thing thing right now right fresh and you know farm to table that's a big um, Mm -hmm. push right now for that in the industry right you're right and that's a a very big trend so from farm to table we have several local partnerships you take for instance Hildebrandt Farms located in spring we've had a partnership with them for 30 years so when possible we try to source products locally wow. and you know from a global perspective if we're talking about the Kroger organization at the larger scale we work with 30,000 farms to source fresh foods it's just it's a mind mind-blowing set that's and definitely I, and, mind-blowing and I want to get into that but I think before we like it's been a year so I know a lot has probably happened in the industry in a year so I know we, the last time we were here we talked about trends and kind of things that were coming or that that were new but tell us a little bit about you know the, the new trends. What's happened in the last yeah, year? Yeah, so I guess we're on maybe version 4.0 of yeah. Kroger, <laughs> yeah. uh, where we compare ourselves to Apple, right? Jokingly. But the big trend is where we're at now is integrating technology into the everyday shopping experience. Think how dependent we all are on our phones. You know, yes. I know there are insane stats, like we touch our phones like hundreds of times a day, and we go, no, we don't. <laughs> but actually, we, we do. <laughs> so again, we are at the, the, the front edge of of integrating mobile technology with the grocery shopping experience. So whether that's through our app and you are loading digital coupons to your plus Mm -hmm. card. So on any given day, we have more than 350 offers. Mm -hmm. So I'll be there real time, just my personal, you know, shopping time. And I'm like, okay, I need dish soap. Is there a coupon for this? Because I want to say yeah. 50 cents, right? It all adds up. Yes. Angelica does oh, that all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. I am one of the users. I am an app user, and I have Kroger on my phone as an app. And so I do use it. Con- well, you know, sometimes it's price comparing. It's what it used to be and what it is now or 
anything and everything helps. I just to get used to it. So I started uh, doing seasonal, like uh, for vegetables, I started seasonal shopping. So I know I like my ripe apples, right? But I know they're not going to be like at the best price, like later on. Like I think now is is the best price. Am I right? Is so yeah, and it's exactly it. So you're, you're talking our language. So when things <laughs> yeah. are in season, <laughs> yeah. uh, the price point will be different. So it really varies. So it's catching, you know, if you love melons or you love strawberries or, or blackberry, finding when that season in season you're going to get the, the best price yeah well it's all thanks to the app that i can actually know this it's i'm not going to google i'm going directly to the app mm -hmm. so i definitely do appreciate any store that does it but one of the things that you did you mentioned last year and i've been paying attention to forever now is that you said that technology right not only on our phones but the store is actually using technology to like uh, censor us as we walk around the store i very much appreciate that i'm okay with big brother you're, like, paying attention <laughs> to me. i'm okay with it because when i come up and i want to pay out i don't want to wait my 15 20 minutes i have to, i'm on the move i have to go and so when the check when there's five people checking us out and you know you walk in you see two you're like it's gonna be long no you walk up there and it's five and you're like how do they do <laughs> right, the mystery of it all. Uh, but what's really cool, we actually just recently did a piece with Channel 2 here at NBC about our expedited checkout technology because it's fascinating. And as you lead into the retail season, it's what are tricks and hacks to navigate your way through the front end? That's what we call in the retail world our lingo, but to choose the quickest lane. And we actually did a, a really fun comparison on, okay, so say you have two choices of a single line that has a customer who has say 30 items or a line that has two customers with roughly 15 items each mm -hmm. which do you think is quickest hmm. the person with the 30 items you got it you why got it. how the payout the, the 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 time it takes for them to pay uh, okay. oh. you're smart you're smart and that's exactly it the time that it takes to greet a new customer for them to <laughs> input their uh payment information mm -hmm. opposed to just that one time uh, transaction, if you will, with a single customer. So you're spot fewer, on. Fewer people equals fewer time. Yeah. It's not so much so the, how big the basket is because they're very, very efficient with uh, basket uh, well, You know, that's numbers. right because sometimes you're stand, you're sitting behind somebody and some, they're taking a long time to take out their wallet and you're like, yeah. you're like come on, I gotta and, move. And I'm that person that's going to hold everybody, everybody down. Because I'm not going to move till everything's back in my purse. And you take great pride in this. I love it. Well, it's, I I accept who I am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But you know, there are just so many, you know, interesting things as we talk about technology and the Food uh, Marketing Institute, FMI, they've come out with different studies. And again, part of the big trend for 2016 and, and where it's going in 17 is the use of digital tools, but mm -hmm. not only digital tools in terms of your app, but actually grocery shopping using digital tools. So earlier this year, we introduced ClickList. So order online, pick up curbside, and it's fascinating. So we have it at about 25 stores in the mm. Houston market now with plans to expand. We were one of the first ones. I think we were we basically, <laughs> yeah, we loved it. We were one of the first ones to use it out in the Rosenberg store, right? And uh, how do I know this? Because they came out and they were explaining to us and they kind of told us is they're one of our, you know, we were one of their first customers and they told us the process, they explained it very well to us what you what they were going to do what we should expect and what they were you should expect out of them and uh we loved it it was around the, the school starting year and so season. yeah so mm -hmm. i got the same prices on the crayons on the glue it, the prices didn't change right it didn't, and that's a big the price thing didn't change. because there are some other services and again and i only can you know i'm only a subject matter expert in kroger service mm -hmm. but exactly if we have promotional pricing that week you have access to that same pricing when you use clicklist or any unique specials everything is consistent from brick and mortar to the digital shopping experience and you can choose from forty thousand different items so a standard kroger store about 95 percent of the things that we have in store are available through clicklist and what's cool about the plus card as you jokingly said big mm -hmm. brother mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and aggregate that list for you so we see that you like turkey bacon you like your uh you know aw root beer we're going to say hey do you want to go ahead and put this in your cart so we see that you buy this every single time you come in so we're going to have a starter <laughs> list for you so we really make it easy for you to navigate your way through those products and, and, and part of that is because of the consumer the, the mindset of the consumer these days right i mean the consumer these days mm -hmm. is, is much more prone to research what they're going to buy and they're much more prone to try different products because they're you know they're maybe i would say i guess the marketing term would be they're not as brand loyal but they are open to trying new products if they think that they if they do the research and they think that they could benefit from them yeah and that's another thing from a fmi perspective is 
Today's customer is savvier than ever, and they're demanding fresher foods, less processed foods. They want choice. They want variety. They're, you know, and think about something like a Yelp, if you will. Mm -hmm. We research everything we do before we do it now. And it, it dictates whether if a restaurant you're planning to go to has two stars after it has five. If it has two, you probably won't go there anymore. But you're starting to see that influence in, in the grocery shopping experience. Do you believe Kroger is ahead of the game? Do you think you're setting the trends? Because I feel you are. We are. We really lead in the space of integrating technology with the experience. So, you know, we've already talked about in a couple of minutes uh, our expedited checkout technology, our mobile app, the functionality of our website, the introduce, introduction of ClickList. We are, we're testing smarter store technology. There are some markets that have actually tested, can you just push your whole cart through? And that's kind of your oh, checkout yeah. experience, right? It's very- Now I'm waiting for that to that happen. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, and again, we're even you know, making tweaks and um, improvements to our self-checkout units as well. So we really, and there are so many other things behind the scenes from a improving data mining and analytics, and just again, really listening to our customers and taking that, but then also kind of being ahead of the curve and working with startups and tech firms in California to see what's the best retail technology that's out there and doing tests. And if it works, then implementing that wide scale. And and everybody talks about millennials and how millennials are kind of having a huge impact on, on lots of industries. Are they having an impact on the grocery industry as well? Like, yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's a great, great, you know, again, going back to the recent FMI study, millennials are the leading group to integrate these digital tools into their everyday shopping experience. So you take something like ClickList, usually the first adapters are those who already have our mobile app. They're already digitally engaged with us. They're comfortable in that space. Okay, great. And then the other thing that I, and I was reading something, uh, I think, I don't know if it was FMI, but I was reading something about, you know, the actual now in-store demonstrations and like engaging customers inside the store is almost just as important as as marketing to them outside of the store. Yeah, you know what, the, the most powerful thing about kind of the in-store demos is the power of samples, right? It, it's we eat and we buy with our eyes. So there's such power in, you know, that little old sweet lady mm -hmm. who's like, would you like to try this cracker <laughs> with this blue cheese and honey pesto? And you're like, yeah, I do. Um, but again, it's encouraging you to kind of step outside of your comfort zone. And we all know once we taste a great item, we, we just can't resist. I've, I've, I'm guilty of buying exactly the items, you know, the wheat thin with the brie, the brie cheese and the honey. Right, and you pick up the recipe yes, card yes. and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm adding that to, to, to my inventory. I, I know how it tastes and I appreciate the fact that I can get a sample and I don't have to buy all the items and then um, assume I know what's going to taste like when I get home. Yeah, because it's a safer bet. And, you know, me, for instance, when I'm preparing food, my go-to app is allrecipes.com, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, I want to see what recipes work and people who have already done it, right? I don't want to be the creator and the innovator of <laughs> right. this. But yeah. you see that, again, played out into the everyday grocery shopping experience that people want to know, is this tried and true before I make that investment? And there are even, like, services now where you can, like, order, like, uh, where it's a meal and it comes with instructions on how to exactly to prepare the meal and it's like it just simplifies it so much for you because you know people are busy and they just like they want to go to the grocery store they want to get their food and just be able to prepare it. I, I yeah. go I go for lunch to the grocery store yeah. like that's one of the things that I do and I appreciate the fact and I know I talked about it a little bit when it's like the not the prepack it's not prepackaged it's like fresh freshness in bags and boxes yeah and, you prepared know meals. yeah and I go I, I Juan can attest to this I go to the grocery store for my meals and Kroger is one of them because I can use my plus card because I can use other things and because I know it's going to be affordable and as a as um I like to play around and say like I'm, I'm a young old person I am I hit right that millennial mark and <laughs> I do see this and I do understand that um even though I like to shop fresh and I like to cook at home I do that about half the time and so I, I want to be able to have that luxury of getting what I want, the way I want it, when I want it. And it's, oh, wow, that sounds so, <laughs> like, right, me, right? But that, that You is, know what? You it's know? so funny because if you could hear our CEO speak, uh, Rodney McMullen, so we're headquartered in Cincinnati, that's exactly it. Like, we are striving to be that grocery that – anywhere, anytime, your desired preference, like we want you to have access to Kroger. I am that person, the people in my family are, it's like, who have made the two o'clock 
run to Kroger because we want ice cream and there's no ice cream oh, in the refrigerator yeah. and yeah and that kind of thing uh, but it's helpful and what I really really like is how every uh, Kroger actually offers something slightly different based upon where they're located and so you know some of them you will get more variety of fruits and vegetables because that's what that neighborhood likes some of them you'll get more variety of multicultural uh, options you know I freaked my mom out the other day because a Kroger near me actually said Sells, uh, actually sells uh, cactus in little bags, mm -hmm. all cut up and ready to cook. And mom goes, you you cut cactus? I'm like, yeah, you're funny. I bought this at Kroger. <laughs> you peeled you wait, you peeled them you, and you no, cut them. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, not it's, my daughter. <laughs> and it's a love it's it's in a lovely little plastic bag. Ready to and go. it's just ready to go. Yeah. And I love nopalitos. Yeah. I hate making them. And this is so helpful. Yeah. And my mom was laughing. I'm like, yeah, if Kroger didn't sell it, I wouldn't do it. Well, yeah. like, even something like guacamole is, like, so easy. Like, it's easy to make, but then you're like, uh, you know, I, I, if it's there and I can just buy it, like, I'll just buy it and take it home. <laughs> but that's part of the, that's part of the, that, that, uh, that fresh almost made there, right? They, they do it to the point where it's fresh enough that you can take it home and you can do it. Nopales is just a great example of that. And there's a lot, so much, you know, like the, the, the cooked meat that I can just take home, put it in a pot and put some vegetables and I'm good to go. And you can get credit for it. Yeah. Isn't that, that's the golden <laughs> thing that we're saying yeah. here. You can then be the hero. <laughs> Kroger does a very good job of all of this. Yeah, and very then, good job yeah, and then what you're saying is just kind of analytics. Mm -hmm. Like we research, so we have a very active real estate team in the Houston market, and we're mm -hmm. we're analyzing different demographics and the neighborhood itself, and we're merchandising, if we're, you will, so translates to putting the right products in the store for that neighborhood good. itself. Yeah, so you know, we, this year alone, we've opened five new stores. Wow, and, you know, from Katy to Baytown to League City to Clute. Those are all different communities. So again, we have to take a very unique approach with every store we open. Now, what's the difference between the signature store and just a regular Kroger store? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. <laughs> um, so the signature concept started in the early 2000s, late 90s, and really it was built on the premise of signature to this community. So there was actually a time where we surveyed the people in those neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and we asked them, hey, what do you want in your grocery store? And they told us. Wow. So we kind of put the signature stamp on that store. Oh, so okay. we have our traditional wow. format stores, and then we have our monster stores, our, our marketplace well, is they're out. they're so convenient because yeah. you have like, I mean, you have clothing, you have like all kinds of stuff in there that you're like, oh, I can just come and shop here for everything. For everything. <laughs> and and it, that's why that concept does really well in kind of suburban yeah. communities where they have limited access to maybe different retail chains or just different types of shops where they are looking for that one-stop shopping experience. Yeah. So our Kroger by, by where we live, um, the neighborhood is changing and so is the store. And instead of... Um, I've noticed some of the stories, instead of going under, Kroger is doing a very good job of switching it up, right? So they're noticing that neighborhood is changing, and they're changing along the way with it. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be big family, big family, and now it's, I think we've had the conversation about how the 30 and under year olds are having less children and aren't getting married as much, and so they're... It's changing, right? I, so I it's like not that the... she grabs onto me with during that. One, although I'm not under thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you this. No, no. Okay. So, but yeah. So the Kroger itself, it's changing. It's no need seen. Its demographic has changed, and unlike the other stores, it's. It's you know, and you hit on something that, you know, from a from a business perspective that we have to be very in tune with, whereas, you know, say 20 years ago, there were, say, four categories of, of families, right? So you had your traditional family, you know, married children, or you had mm -hmm. your, you know, just so many, you know, aging household. Uh, now you have plethora of different households you have that you know millennial single person and they don't have intentions of getting married anytime soon mm -hmm. you have the you know married couple that they don't have intentions of having children and you still have your traditional families and your empty nesters and the mm -hmm. list goes on and on but it's our responsibility to create a store experience that everyone feels like wow this is tailored to me mm -hmm. uh and it, it's not hard it's not it's not easy to do i should say that it, it takes a lot of work to be able to personalize a store for every person that comes right. in the doors but we do that too leveraging digital tools where you do feel like that experience is just for you 
Right. So Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and I know that last year we had a great time talking about Thanksgiving, but for those people who are new to the show, let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that y'all do to prepare for the holidays and some of the things that you see as far as what's popular and what's not. Mm-hmm. Sure. So the bird still rules. Turkey <laughs> isn't going anywhere, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Well, you know, I, and I, Sorry, I mentioned Sandra. this. No, no, I love turkey, but, you know, I mentioned how... Um, I have, I know families that like maybe turkey is not something that they're very fond of, but they have actually turned turkey into one of the ingredients into other recipes. And so like uh, one of my friends, her grandma makes a homemade turkey noodle soup. Like she makes the noodles from scratch and everything. I have another friend where grandma makes turkey tamales and that's how they in- in- integrate turkey into their Thanksgiving holiday because mm-hmm. they don't like turkey. But they, you know, they do it. They do it anyway. But of course, we're big fans of turkey. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then the turducken is what you. Oh know. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. No, last year, and no, I think that last year was the last year we're gonna we're gonna do the turducken. The turducken has had it, <laughs> has had it done. Yes. But you know what's really cool? Um, again, so you take something like an, a, the staple that that is a turkey. And again, just changing demographics where you have people who have, you know, family recipes that they're passing mm-hmm. down, or maybe, you know, households, family recipes weren't passed down, but now you have this audience who's tapped into social and Pinterest and they're following <laughs> food bloggers and they're like, I want to try that, yeah. right? So you see it all. Or you have the folks who are just like, actually, I don't want to dirty my kitchen and I just want to place an order yeah. to pick up the turkey and the cranberry sauce and the green beans. And it's a, a, a really cool staff that I, I learned from our uh, deli and bakery group last year that one, Texas leads, our market leads in online um, holiday meal orders. Oh, wow. Ooh, yeah. but, but, wait, but wait for it. So 50% of those orders, 50 actually come in on Thanksgiving itself. Oh, oh wow. my goodness. Isn't that nuts? So we in, in the Houston market, we're open until 4 p.m. Oh, on Thanksgiving. Staff. So it's just, it's wild. So fifty percent of your Thanksgiving orders come in on the day of Thanksgiving. So people are there to pick up that oh, day. Wow, that's incredible. That that's press <laughs> procrastinators I, unite. I am guilty. <laughs> I am one of those, oh, and I've said it a time oh, and time lovely. again that I am okay with that. I am okay with that as long as I can add some seasoning to my green beans or mashed potatoes, make them taste garlicky and and um, cheesy. I'm fine. I'm fine. But obviously, they know where to go. Right. They know where to go. So it's just, it's, go. it's just it's fascinating. And then you talk about, you know, Christmas and other uh, winter holidays. That looks a little different for, mm. for everyone. But Thanksgiving is the, the leading food holiday. And I, I believe I mentioned this last year that Super Bowl is the second. Mm. So with, uh, you know, our city being the host for Super Bowl 2017, we're just excited. Can you tell us the great things Kroger's going to do while all, as the Super Bowl, like, rolls in, right? Yeah, so there's so many things that are happening. So, again, you know, we, we are fortunate that we have many great partners, such as Frito-Lay and Pepsi, and we'll be involved with the NFL experience that will take mm-hmm. place at George R. Brown. Uh, I actually just – something was put on my calendar. There's a celebrity football game that's happening. But there are going to be so many different promotions um, with so many of our different vendors, such as Mars. So they create m and uh, again, beer partners, wine partners. We are just really excited and eager because the Super Bowl is a food holiday. It's a celebration. Yes, again, it is. Only 70,000 people can fit in NRG. Uh, <laughs> however, you can pack as many in your house yeah. as, you, as you want to for the cost of free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And then the other thing I did when I, I kind of asked you about was like are, like new things like Day of the Dead. Like we're seeing the Day of the Dead is like becoming really a huge, very popular holiday mm-hmm. now in the United States. Like, have you guys seen any of that, like, affecting anything so far? Yeah. So, you know, again, going back to all of the analytics and research that we have that our analytics show, like, stores that skew Latino, we do very Mm -hmm. unique promotions for that because understanding that within the Hispanic culture, that's a very important holiday. So our stores that skew more Latino, we do unique promotions and activations there. And we we do take notice and we do appreciate Kroger doing that. So congratulations on that. Yeah, yeah thanks definitely. for noticing. Yeah. yeah, that's just great. That's great feedback to hear. I'll take that back to the farm. Awesome. <laughs> so I think that that's a great conversation. And, and before we leave, though, I did want to know anything else that you want to share with us, anything else you want to, you know, just let us know, make us aware of or make the listeners yeah. aware of. That would be great. 
Yeah, we learned from you, actually. I know. Isn't that great? Know. Like, <laughs> continue to come in, buy food, experiment, <laughs> explore. Uh, that. You know, that's that's always a, the closing note. But again, it, it's a fun business. It's a really fun business, and it keeps you on your toes. And in the Houston market, it's, it's a very competitive landscape. And again, as people continue to move here, as just density grows, which we can all feel on the highways as we drive, uh, again, like, we're in it for the long haul. We've been here since 1955. We have 112 stores and that number continues oh, to wow. grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're all the way down from Galveston to Huntsville to, uh, you know, Clute to uh, every every single touch point. Kingwood. So, so find a Kroger near you. <laughs> so and, find and, a and Kroger near you and explore and download the app. Well, Crystal, our friend, it's always great to have you. So we're happy to have you and thank you for joining us and we'll look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, this is The Little Radio Show on hmsnetradio.org. When it comes to bad sleeping habits, I'm one of the worst offenders you're ever going to find. The truth of the matter is that I don't sleep enough. I don't sleep nearly enough. I go to sleep late, I tend to sleep a few hours, and then I spend the rest of my day lethargic. I'm a night owl. I have been for most of my life. I tend to get a lot more done in the evening and the late hours of the day when people seem to be winding down and the distractions are few and far between. Now I've seen all of the articles about productivity and almost all of them will tell you that in order to have a more productive day, you need to get up early, do all of your important stuff, the most vital stuff, first thing in the morning before the distractions hit you. And that's how most of the more successful people have shown that they uh, that they schedule their day. And I've run several, I've run many, many attempts at trying to convert myself into a morning person and I've been unsuccessful. The truth that I'm looking at now though, as I get older, is that I can't really sustain this lack of sleep pattern that I've been doing most of my life. And that is you know, sleeping four or five hours a night and then catching up quote unquote on my sleep maybe once a week and sleeping in and doing that. It's taking its toll on me. I find myself to be unfocused. I find myself to be lethargic. I find myself to be completely unproductive and not just because I'm not a morning person, but because I can't focus and I'm not actually getting things done and I'm making mistakes uh, far easier. A few of the things that you will find that have been proven scientifically that happen when you are lacking sleep include you are more prone to getting colds and flus. What lack of sleep does is that it affects your immune system. Scientifically proven, there are studies out there that you are, I wanna say it's four times more likely to get a cold if you're not getting enough sleep than if you are. So that's a really, really good reason right there to go out and actually get all of the sleep that you need is, especially during cold and flu season, is that it'll reduce your, the likelihood, or at least it won't increase your likelihood of getting a cold, which nobody wants to get at the best of times. The other thing that it does is that it increases weight gain. Yes, yeah, so if you're trying to lose weight, one of the first things you'll wanna do is start getting enough sleep. And this is, again, I'm just pulling it out from articles that I've re read, but that what happens is that your body starts to store additional energy, which is fat in your body, because you're not getting the energy that you need from sleep. So you're more prone to getting sick. You're more prone to being fat. The other thing are items that I already mentioned is you're unfocused. So you're, it's easier for you to make mistakes your reaction time is slower, you start to have memory issues, so you're not m remembering things as easily, you're forgetting items, you're not retaining things as easy. There's all sorts of reasons why athletes and students and other people are all told, get a 
good night's sleep before having a big performance review, a big performance of a performance test of any kind, a test, a competition, a contest, a race, anything where their focus is going to be, have to be sharp. A good night's sleep is a requirement. Now, a lot of people out there will tell you, and I want to say that there are even books that are say that are, that, that are dedicated to this, that, uh, Sleep deprivation in the United States has reached epidemic proportions. That means that it's one of those things that we have just incorporated into our lives in such a way that it's almost like we wear it as a badge of honor. I only got X amount of sleep. No, we are actually killing ourselves. We've, uh, we've had this topic on the show before. However, as I sit here sleep deprived and with a cold, and knowing that I am doing it to myself, I'm actually going to challenge all of you to join me in a commitment to get enough sleep and see how this affects your life. And I'll report back on how it affects mine. This is the Sandra PSA for this week. And I hope that all of you go out and get some Z's. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Little Radio Show. We invite you to check out our iTunes and our Stitcher channels and leave us a rating or a review. You can find the link to both channels at thelittleradioshow.com.